Hey, Community Bible Church, it's Pastor Joel, and uh, hey, happy Valentine's Day to you and yours, and also for some of us, so we're going to be celebrating Ash Wednesday today, uh, but then if you are from other denominations, uh, like Baptist, uh, how I grew up, or a non-denominational Bible Church, like what we are uh, right now, it's also just known as Wednesday. <laughs> There's nothing special about it. You're not a special holiday that we particularly celebrate. And you might be wondering, hey, why is that? Because maybe you grew up not like that, but you actually grew up Catholic or, or Lutheran or Presbyterian or, or a denomination that actually celebrates that. And Or maybe you've just seen some of your friends and neighbors with the cross on their forehead there and uh, with ashes today. And you're like, hey, why, why do certain Christians do that? Uh, but then we don't. And what does the Bible say about that? And should we partake in it here? And so I want just to take a minute and talk about that and then also talk about really the, the true meaning behind some of these things and why there is some really good redeeming aspects of it. And so first of all, though, I just want to answer the question, hey, why don't we have an Ash Wednesday service? And why don't we celebrate the season of Lent, which is the next 40 days leading into Easter? And there's a very simple reason why we don't do that. It's not in the Bible. And so as Community Bible Church, we try to find our um, traditions as firmly rooted in scripture here. Now, we still have some traditions that have just outgrown even just locally in our church. Uh, and we have some traditions that are just uh, under the broadscape of uh, Christianity here for which we follow. So we're not necessarily anti-tradition here, but at the same time, we always want to make sure to the best of our ability that we are aligning those traditions back to scripture. And you are not going to find Nash Wednesday uh, in scripture. You're not also going to find a season of Lent uh, uh, in the way that it's often described as in scripture as well. And so, you know, Colossians chapter two actually mentions a little bit about this. It says, therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food or drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. So obviously this is con talking more in the context of those coming out of Judaism, but he reminds them here, hey, don't don't let other people judge you because you do or you don't celebrate a particular holy day, a particular holiday here. Uh, but rather, all of those festivals of the Old Testament times were just a, a shadow, a type of Christ that points to Christ. And they were fulfilled in Jesus Christ here. And in the same way for us today, some of these traditions that the church has adopted over the last thousand years, um, they are not necessarily commanded by Scripture, but rather there are still some ideas of it that are just shadows of Christ or help point us to Christ here. And, and so we should hopefully be able to take the good and uh, leave some of the bad or leave some of the things that just aren't directly commanded by scripture here. And so this season of Lent is started today with Ash Wednesday. That kicks it off here. And the season of Lent is really just a time of confessing your sins and repenting from your sins and turning your eyes back to Jesus as we prepare ourselves over the next four days for the uh, Easter holiday here. 40 days is a significant time period in scripture. You guys know that uh, between the 40 years in the wilderness and 40 days of reigning uh, Noah's time period among many others. And the, really the specific one that this one is going to be celebrating is the 40 days of fasting by Jesus as he prepared for the ministry as well here. For us, though, whenever we talk about uh, Lent, it is a time that we then spend 40 days leading up into Easter, just confessing those sins, repenting from those sins as we prepare our hearts for the death and burial and resurrection of our Lord. And the idea now of confessing and repenting of our sins is absolutely still a biblical idea. So don't get caught up in all the details of exactly 40 days or exactly, you know, putting the ash on your head or anything like that. That That's all just extra there. But the ideas of confessing and repenting your sins absolutely should be a practice, not just those 40 days, but all year long. But as we do lead up into Easter, what a wonderful time just to continue to say every single day, I'm going to make sure that I am uh, confessing my sins, that I am denying myself, that I'm looking to the cross and just being reminded of that as well. That is a good thing here for us to be reminded of and probably a weakness of some of our traditions here in a Bible church or a non-denominational church or Baptist or Pentecostal is that we have not necessarily um, given credence to just some really good 
good habits and really good flows. We, we want to make sure, though, that we're not being consumed by the legalism of just keeping those traditions, but rather we're always trying to just dig a little deeper and say, what's the heart of the matter? And uh, the heart of the matter is confessing our sins, then yes, we can absolutely get on board with that. And so what does the Bible say about that? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 says, verse 9, as it is written, I rejoice not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. And so here it reminds us that godly grief leads us to repenting and that repentance then leads us back to the Lord. It's the turning back on our, uh, turning our back on our sin and turning our eyes back to the Lord, which is something that we need, must continually, continually do. Not because we lose our salvation whenever we are caught up in sin. If you are truly a Christian, God has already paid for that sin on the cross for you. But rather, it does break the a fellowship that we have with the Father whenever the whenever there is this unrepentant sin. And so take this time now as we look through the next 40 days into this Easter season, I, I hope you do take some extra time and say, you know what? I really want to spend some extra time in uh, the Bible. I really want to spend some time uh, just denying myself and uh, confessing my sins and repenting from my sins so I can align my heart back to the Lord. So don't get consumed with all the extra traditions or, or just the formalities of it, but go down to the heart and we can celebrate that because godly repentance, godly repentance, leads us back to life. And that is the message of Easter, that we have life and life abundantly through him because he is risen. He is risen indeed.